Hello again. I was looking a little more closely at the University of East London today and found to my surprise that it was a university of choice for the woman who has done more to harm Britain than anybody else I can think of in modern times. The University of East London was so impressed by her efforts to take a wrecking ball to the British Constitution that it awarded her an honorary degree, or I should more probably say doctorate, of which more later. First, a brief bit about the political structure of Western democracy. Many viewers will have heard of the concept of the separation of powers, which is absolutely vital to keep governments in check. Gina Miller's actions upset the balance of powers in our democracy and this resulted in the present situation where the government is accountable to nobody and is in effect ruling by decree. How did this happen? There are three chief powers in the land. One is the executive, which is simply the government. That means in this country Boris Johnson and his cabinet in Downing Street. Another power is the legislature, the law-making body. In Britain, that's Parliament. Then there is the judiciary, the judges. Having a balance between these three powers makes for stability and it prevents dictatorships from getting off the ground. The government might want to make a terrible law, say restricting people's liberty. In the usual way of things, they have to go to Parliament, the legislature, and ask them to pass this law. Even then, though, there is another safeguard, and that is the judiciary. If it is a bad law, even though the executive and the legislature have both decided that they'll push it through, the judiciary, the judges, can sabotage it or declare that it's not in accord with some principle. Ideally, these three powers act independently, and that is the principle of the separation of powers, and it protects us from arbitrary laws and infringements on our liberty. But wait, I hear you say, something must have gone wrong, because we have an executive at the moment which is doing pretty much as it wants, ignoring the legislature, riding roughshod over our right to assemble and live our lives as we wish. They are ruling by decree. Hmm, that's right and it is largely down to Gina Miller that this has happened. It will be remembered that after the referendum, the government, headed by Theresa May, was about to withdraw from Europe. This was the executive following the expressed will of the people, perfectly right and proper. Gina Miller went to the High Court and insisted that Parliament needed to consent to the move to leave Europe. The court agreed, whereupon Parliament began to try every trick possible to try and block the exit from the European Union. I'm sure viewers will remember this. It was a terrible constitutional crisis because now the legislature was running the country and the executive was powerless. Later on, the Supreme Court ruled in 2019 that Boris Johnson could not suspend Parliament. The fine balance between the three powers, which had been delicately built up over the centuries, was smashed to pieces in the space of three years. First the legislature and then the judiciary were now running things and deciding what would happen next. This was all caused by Gina Miller. When Boris Johnson had finally got the legislation through, he obviously decided that it was time that the executive seized back control of the country and he began to rule by simply ignoring Parliament. Now the executive had unlimited power. Boris Johnson found that by various tricks he could order existing laws to be changed by statutory instruments. The government could do whatever it wished without either the legislature or the judiciary being able to do anything at all about it. This is an absolutely shocking situation with a government which can do precisely as it wishes without consulting Parliament and without the safeguard of the courts. I've never seen anything like it in my life. 
The whole of the British political system has now been irretrievably damaged and the executive is ruling without anybody being willing or able to oppose them. The principle of the separation of powers and the traditional way of government in Britain has been broken and it was Gina Miller who brought this about. In the 1980s, Gina Miller was a student of law at the University of East London, although she did not graduate. The university was so pleased at her efforts to try and sabotage Brexit that in 2017 they awarded her an honorary doctorate in law, which tells you, by the way, their own opinions about democracy. Why did Gina Miller, a Sikh who was born and grew up in South America, do this awful thing. She explained in a letter to Jeremy Corbyn in 2018 her motivation, saying, I beg you as Labour's leader to reject a policy that will so obviously turn our country into a laboratory for one of the most extreme right-wing experiments we have witnessed since the 1930s. This was clearly a reference to the Nazis coming to power in Germany in 1933. It is how she viewed Brexit. Just savour that for a moment. Somebody from the South American Banana Republic is describing the greatest vote for anything in the history of the United Kingdom as being comparable with the rise of Hitler. This was her view of democracy. There was, by the way, talk when Miller was taking action in the High Court that she had been the victim of a racist attack while at university and this was why she had not graduated. It was hinted that her experience of racism at that time had affected how she felt about Brexit. Yes, about that racist attack. A couple of years later she gave more details about it. She's Sikh and it seems that she was attacked by a group of Indians who disapproved of her Western clothes and lifestyle. A group of Indians attacking a Sikh is perhaps not what most people first think of when they are told that somebody has been the victim of a racist attack. And there you have it, Gina Miller, the woman who single-handedly screwed up the British Constitution and caused Boris Johnson to start acting like a dictator during the pandemic and was then rewarded by her actions by the University of East London.